When you first start looking at buying an NVR, there's a whole host of different options that you can buy. Do you buy a dedicated NVR? Do you look at an all-in-one unit? And then there's some subset of questions that you want to ask yourself after that. Do I need a switch? Can I run it standalone? Do I have a third-party router? What sort of applications am I looking for? So in this video, we'll try and break some of this down and have a look through some of the specifications of each of the units and have a look at what sort of scenarios, possibly small, medium and large, where you would actually deploy these in. So let's jump straight into the standalone MVRs, and that's the first area we're going to be looking at. So there's five different models that you can choose from. We have the newly released NVR Instant. You can use a Cloud Key Plus Gen 2, an NVR, an NVR Pro, and the ENVR. All of them across the board run a different amount of cameras. They all do different things. They have different specifications. There's a few other questions that you want to ask yourself also along the way. And that is how much redundancy you need. So as you go up through these models, your level of redundancy increases. Yes, you can add more cameras, but the redundancy is the key thing as you start doing those larger deployments. Do you need disk redundancy? So if one disk fails, another one takes over. So some sort of RAID capability, or do you need power redundancy? So do you need a dual power supply with a hot swappable PSU, or would you be happy with just a redundant power supply? So let's start with, I guess, what you would probably class as a smaller deployment, which is your NVR Instant and the Cloud Key Plus Gen 2. The NVR Instant is the newest one into the market. That runs 15 HD cameras, eight 2K cameras, and six 4K cameras, whereas the Cloud Key Plus Gen Gen 2, you would need to provide your own switch and make sure you have your own gateway. Obviously, if you have a Unify stack, fine, but you would need to provide that and that will give you 24 HD cameras, 14 2K cameras and 8 4K cameras. The MVR Instant is that all-in-one device as it has PoE ports. It has a space for a single three and a half inch hard drive. The other advantage is it has a viewport built into it. So you can plug in a HDMI cable and away you go. And that costs just $199. Now there is a kit version you will buy. I haven't put it in here, but there's a kit version you can buy, which comes with a drive and four cameras. And that comes in at $699. Now for the Cloud Key Gen 2, you only have a single hard drive in there again, but that can be an SSD or HDD. You can buy two different models. Yes, you can rack mount it if you buy the rack kit. That's an additional purchase, but there's no viewport or any power redundancy within it. Now we start looking onto the rack mounted model. So we have the NVR, the NVR Pro and the ENVR. As you go up through the model, Yes, you can add more cameras to your setup, but one thing to keep in mind is the NVR Pro can also be stacked as well. So in terms of drive configuration, you have the 4, 7 and 16 bay, depending on what you need, and they both take 2.5 or 3.5 inch drives. As you go up each of them in size, they all take an additional U, so 1U, 2U, 3U. None of them have a viewport built into them. The NVR and the NVR Pro has redundancy in terms of power through the RPS, but the ENVR has a hot swappable PSU inside it. And obviously, again, as you go up, you jump through in price. Best value for money if you're looking for an all-in-one kit at this point is probably the NVR Instant. But if you have something a little bit more bigger and you need a bit more capacity, then you may want to have a look at the NVR if you want something dedicated or even the Cloud Key Gen 2. Now, I know a lot of you at this point are going to be saying, well, what about all the all-in-one gateways that have Protect on them? And we'll come to that in just a moment. I've set... I've kind of separated this in two different ways, purely because we have a standalone unit and then we have an all-in-one unit. So going to the NVR Instant for your very basic all-in-one deployment, it has the PoE ports, it has HDMI output, it has everything that you need, all the way up to a larger deployment, which can handle up to 70 4K cameras. But again, that comes at a price as well. That comes in at $1,999. And there's the drive cost on top of that as well. Okay, so maybe you've decided that the standalone MVR isn't for you and you want to look at something a little bit more all-in-one. So you have a network setup that you want to get going and you want to have the same abilities to be able to run Protect. So I've done, I've compiled a list of all the cloud gateways that do run Unify Protect. So we have the UDR7, the DreamWall, the Cloud Gateway Max, the Cloud Gateway Fiber, the UDM Pro, the UDM Pro SE, and the UDM Pro Max. So there's quite a few of them there, there's seven in total. Now the UDR is obviously the most basic one in there where it only runs five HD cameras, two 2K cameras, and one 4K camera. The Dream Wall runs a little bit more, which is 15, uh, 12, 7, and 1. And then we have the Cloud Gateway Max and Fiber. I've combined the Max and the Fiber together and the Pro and the SE together because they run the same amount of cameras. I've separated them in terms of their ports, but we'll have a look at that in just a few moments. Up until the UDM Pro and the UDM Pro SE, it runs exactly the same as the Cloud Key. Now the UDM Pro Max is where it slightly differs. That does a slightly higher level of camera, so that has 50 HD cameras, 25 2K cameras and 15 4K cameras. So that handles a lot more. In terms of apps, they all run the same. In terms of PoE ports, I haven't listed all the ports on the devices because we are just looking at the camera side of things. 
So one POE on the UDR7, the Dream Waller obviously is the complete all-in-one unit so that has 17 POE type ports. That is a, ver a, a variety of POE++, POE+, and POE. The Cloud Gateway Max doesn't have any POE ports, but the Cloud Gateway Fiber has one POE+. And the UDM Pro, again, no POE, but the UDM SE has eight, which is two POE+, and six POE. And then the Pro Max again doesn't have any PoE. So you can kind of almost see the theme going with this where it's there, but you need to get yourself an additional switch. So if you do need those additional ports, you are gonna to have to buy yourself an additional switch, which you can connect into, which is no problem at all. You can do it with any of these devices. But again, it's that question of, do you want the all-in-one unit or do you want something separate that's gonna be running Unify Protect for you? In terms of rack mountable, we know the UDR7 is a desktop and a compact one. The Dream Wall is designed to be hung on a wall. The Cloud Gateway Fiber and the Cloud Gateway Max, you might be able to get yourself 3D printed, but it's not really designed to be rack mounted. It's a desktop unit. And then the Pro SE and the Pro Max are the ones that have the rack mount capabilities. None of them have any built-in viewports. And in terms of power redundancy, it's only the Dream Wall that has a hot swappable power supply. The rest is a power redundancy via the RPS, except the UDR7, which there's no redundancy at all. The prices are all across the bottom, which reflect that going from the UDR, going from the Cloud Gateway Max being the cheapest, all the way up to the Dream Wall. So if you want to have a look at any of this information in a little bit more detail, you can go and hit pause if that's what you want to do. The last thing I will mention on here, though, is the number of drives. The Dream Wall and the UDR7 both have micro SD. The Cloud Gateway Max and Fiber take an M2 SSD. And then the UDM Pro and SE and Pro Max all have 2.5 and 3.5 inch drive support for both SSD and HDD, with the Pro Max having two drive bays. Even though I've laid them out on a nice table for you, if there's something you wanna take a look at specifically or you wanna dive into a little bit more detail, there's a few websites I can refer you to. So techspecs.ui.com, you can go to camera security, which is just up here and click compare, which is just there. And then you can go to NVR and viewports, and then you can compare whatever you wish. So if you want to look at the NVR Pro versus the NVR, you can have a little look at that and it will tell you all the comparisons and everything that I've just given you. Maybe there's a bit more information in terms of power and RAM and CPU, if that's what you want to take a look at. You can go to that website just there. The next website you'll probably find a little bit more useful is Unify Storage Requirements and Compatibilities. So all along here, it tells you everything that's compatible, not compatible. Uh, incompatible vendors. So there's a couple of drives that don't fit or they don't have screws at the bottom, whatever it might be. And that is all in there. I'll link this down in the description along with all the products that I have spoken about today. So if you are looking to purchase any of these, if you click the link down below, it does help the channel. The last one you might want to take a look at is calculator.ui.com. Click on that. If we go to this website, it takes you to a nice capacity calculator. So depending on what you're looking to do, so if you are looking at an ENVR, you want to look at your specific use case and actually find out how much retention you need. So say, for example, we had maybe 12 2K cameras. We had 10 4K cameras. We're going to populate the drives with 24 terabytes. So depending on the number of days you need, so say we need 60 days, for example, I know that's 61, but it's telling you you need one, two, three, four, five 24 terabyte drives for that. And obviously if you go all the way to the end, you want 261 days, you can populate all the drives and it will give you that much. And then depending on what you have is depending on the number of days, the more cameras you have, obviously the less retention you will have in total. So you can do that for any of these. You have the cloud gateways up here as well, along with the cloud key and the dream wall and the unified dream router. So all of that up here, you can click and select and it makes life a little bit easier when you're looking to calculate something. There is actually one more that I came across the other day. So when you go to the Ubiquiti website and you go to store.ui.com and you click on camera security and you go to NVR and viewports, this little thing pops up here, which is quite useful. So on this, you can choose HD camera. So you can select, I don't know, 28 HD cameras, for example, and it will automatically filter down what will be able to run that for you. If I just had 10, it obviously would be a little bit bigger and we have the NVR kits and the instance and the cloud keys. And then if we start adding a little bit more and you can add in, the only thing with this one is you're only able to choose a single size on here. So if you go 4K, you can only do 4K. If you do 2K, you can only do 2K. That's where the calculator.ui.com comes in, which is a lot more useful. Finally, we want to talk about what sort of deployment size we would want to look to use which instance in. So. I've just categorized them into small, medium, and large. I mean, it really depends on, you can look at the number of cameras as to where you would categorize that. I mean, I would probably do small in terms of residential, small office, home office. Medium would be a slightly larger building, perhaps. 
and then large would be even a large building or multiple buildings depending on how that looks but i'm sure there are people that run the medium or large in some smaller environments such as a residential build so it really depends but this kind of gives you a rough guidance as to what you want to look at so in terms of the small layout would be looking for the nvr instant or the cloud key plus gen 2 if you have your own setup any of the all-in-one gateways uh, the reason i say that is because it's running multiple applications on the same device so it's not something i would like to scale to a larger environment we then have the medium which is the nvr and the nvr pro again it depends on how big a deployments i think for those slightly bigger deployments you're going to want the extra redundancy you're going to want the extra disk space you're going to need the storage so that's something I would probably do in terms of medium. And then if you went for a large kit out, I would probably go with the NVR Pro stacked so you can stack them or the ENVR, depending on which one suits your budget and your requirement. There isn't too much more to cover on this. I hope this has given you an avenue to help you make a decision in terms of what you need. If there is something specific that you think I've missed out, let me know down in the comments. So if I ever do an updated one, I can add that in or if there's something that you feel that isn't correct, again, let me know down in the comments below. All the links to the products that I've spoken about are down in the description, so it does help the channel if you do use them. They are affiliate links. For now, this is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.